Welcome to Chapter 9, Regression Analysis, the video series hosted by me, Tim Smith, on the workbook of Quantitative Tools and Techniques in Marketing, 2nd edition. In this chapter, obviously, we're going to be doing regression analysis, and we need to take a look again at variables, both independent and dependent variables. Age is often an independent variable, and it might influence one's interest in health care, insurance, or financial services. So there's an example of an independent variable which influences different dependent variables. Price is often an independent variable, very important to marketers. That is one of the four P's we manage. And it would influence quantity sold. It can also influence perceived benefits. Another example of an independent variable is distance from coast. That may influence the interest in seafood or the interest in beachwear. College education is often treated as an independent variable. Many of us believe it is correlated with income. More education leads to more income. People have done other studies and found that college education is also correlated with marriage. You're more likely to get married if you have a college education. And it's correlated with divorce. In this case, the more college education you have, the, least, the less likely you are to suffer from divorce. So these are lots of independent variables being found correlated with different dependent var variables. Some of the correlations make sense, others do not. And that is a ripe area of social science and social research. It can also affect strongly marketing, which does apply a lot of the social sciences. When we're looking at correlation and regression analysis, one of the things we'll be doing is taking scatter plots. Now, scatter plots are just a quick way of looking at data. And they, you know, from looking at the data, you can determine if there's a correlation or not. For instance, here. Notice how as my y increases, my x increases, we would say that that's positively correlated. Or here, as my y increases my x, well, this is negatively correlated because that goes down, down in slopes. That's negatively cor correlated. As x increases, y goes down, goes down. So that's an example of negative correlation. And finally, we also have no correlation or none. I mean, there's different x's, and you can't tell if y is going to be up or down or up or down or all over the place. So to look at data quickly and determine if there is a correlation, we will often look at a scatter plot to see if there's a correlation worth investigating or to also to show why the correlation we're talking about is real to a manager. Another aspect that we're going to be looking at in correlation is Pearson's R. Now, Pearson's R describes the level of correlation. Pearson's R can be positive or negative. Here's the equation here. It's positive if two things are positively correlated. It's negative if two things are negatively correlated. Let's take a look at this equation for a little bit here. Let's look at the uh, denominator first. That's the square root of the sum of the variance is an x, you know, that's the uh, x sub i minus x bar is the difference between a particular point and the average uh, x. So that would be, you know, the, when we square it, that would form the variance or a portion of the variance in x. Similarly here, that will be the portion of the variance in y. And here's x sub i minus x bar times y sub i minus y bar. So if this differential is positive, and this is positive as well, so in other words, we're at a high y and a high x, uh, then this product would be positive, and that would imply a positive correlation. If this differential is negative, and this one is positive, that would imply that a low x leads to a high y, and our r would be negative. So you're seeing here again, Pearson's R is negative if it's negatively correlated, and it's positive if it's positively correlated. Now, when we take the absolute value of R, we form a useful way of quickly describing the strength of the correlation. 
If R is near 1, we'd call that very strong. And if R is very close to 0, we'd call that very weak. Between 0.4 and 0.6, many researchers would call that uh, correlation as moderate. Between 0.6 up to 0.8, we'd call that strong. Between 0.2 and up to 0.4, we'd call that weak. This might be a handy set of numbers to remember. If we square R, we end up with R squared. Now, R squared is going to describe the percentage of the variation of the dependent variable that is determined by the independent variable. In other words, like an R squared of 98%, it's considered extremely good. It implies the line that we create out of the regression analysis is a very good description of how the X determines the Y. But even a small R squared, like a 12%, would still can still imply something useful. It can still imply that variations in X imply some variation in Y. So while R squared can go from 0 to 1, uh, and many researchers would like to have a high R squared, even small R squared doesn't mean that the equation needs to be thrown away. It just implies that you found something, but not everything, that describes the variation in the data. A note about correlation and regression analysis. Very importantly, correlation is not causation. Just because two things are correlated, there may or may not be a causation. I can put this in scientific terms. If A and B are correlated, that doesn't mean A causes B, nor that B causes A. The two might just be correlated. An example of this is marriage and college. Researchers found that the likelihood of getting married is correlated with the likelihood of completing college. But that would be odd to say that college causes people to get married or that marriage causes people to get college. That, that's a ludicrous claim. It just doesn't make sense. This might be due to some third variable, such as, here's an example, gray hair and wrinkled skin tend to uh, be caused by aging, but gray hair does not cause wrinkled skin, and wrinkled skin does not cause gray hair. Now, it's a third variable causing this, uh, this correlation that is often seen. Other ideas that may cause a correlation, even though there is no causation, are outliers, or that the correlation is only true over a very small range of numbers. And once you extrapolate outside of that range of numbers, the correlation no longer holds. So it's just a local correlation, not a global correlation. So let's go ahead and try to do a regression. And here's the equations for regression. What we're doing in a regression is we're creating a line, like y equals mx plus b. So here's my m, here's my b. Let's take a look at this M very closely because we need to compare this slope to our Pearson's R. This is my XI times YI. This is my sum of X's times my sum of Y's. This is my sum of X squared minus the sum of X quantity squared. Now look at this denominator. That's only dependent upon X. In contrast, I'm going to go back a few slides. Two, three. Here, look at that denominator. It's dependent upon both x and y. So your Pearson's r is symmetric in x and y, but the slope of the regression equation is not. So when we're doing a regression, we have to be very careful about what we're choosing to be our x and what we're choosing to be our y. Because if we change our x, we can't use 1 over m to find our new slope. It would be a totally different slope. Okay? When we find our slope, we can simply find our intercept, b, by changing the equation, y equals mx plus b. Subtract mx from both sides, you have b equals y minus mx, or b equals y minus mx. So there we can find our intercept, and here's our equation for our slope. From this line here, we can make predictions. Now, this is a very simple linear regression. I'll also show you multivariate regression. But first, let's try Excel with linear regression. 